going to show you how to make this cute clutch for this project you are going to need a nine by six canvas bag i get these little bags from hobby lobby but you can get them off of amazon as well and we're going to hot glue that into the project at the end this just makes it more functional and helps it hold its shape you're also going to need a five and a half millimeter hook but see the description box for the gauge I'm using Pima Suprema by Yarn B. This is a Hobby Lobby brand. You will need one ball and it's a size four medium weight. To begin, make a chain of 48. I'm going to fast forward and meet you there. Once you have 48 stitches, we are going to turn and work into the fourth chain from your hook. You're going to make one double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook. And you are going to put one double crochet in every stitch until you reach the very last stitch. So you're just going to repeat that until you reach the very last stitch, and I will meet you there. Here I am at the last stitch. We are going to put nine double crochet into this last stitch. Once you have your nine double crochet, we are going to start working into the foundation chain down the other side. And you're just going to put one double crochet in each chain across. So you should have two double crochet essentially sharing the stitches of the foundation chain, except for that last stitch that has nine in it. And I am crocheting over the top of my tail here and I'm hiding it and I'm also going to tighten that last stitch with it. So here I am at the end. I wanted to remind you that our beginning chain three does count as a stitch. So we are going to put a stitch in the beginning chain three. I did have to switch to a smaller hook in order to do this. And at the end, you should have 99 double crochet. For row two, you're going to chain three and turn. That beginning chain three will count as a stitch. And we're going to put one double crochet in each stitch until we reach that grouping of nine doubles. So go ahead and put one double crochet in each stitch until you reach that group of nine. And I will meet you there. So here we are at the nine doubles that we put in the last stitch. This is going to serve as our flap, so we need to increase. So we're going to put two double crochet in each of those nine stitches. Once you've increased in each of those nine stitches, you're going to put one double in each stitch across. And I wanted to remind you, don't forget that beginning chain three below, and you should have 108 doubles at the end of this row. And this is what it should look like. Now for row three, we're going to chain two. This will not count as a stitch from here on out. 
We're going to chain two and turn. We are going to skip the first two stitches. So where our chain two comes out, that's not a stitch. So we're skipping that stitch and the next stitch. So in the third stitch of the row, we are going to make two double crochets followed by a puff stitch all in the same stitch. So make your two double crochet. And a puff stitch in this particular pattern is you insert your hook into the stitch and pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and insert your hook back into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to do that two more times. And you should have eight loops on your hook when you are done. Now you're just going to yarn over and pull through all loops and their puff stitch is completed. So now we're going to skip two stitches and we're going to repeat that. We're going to put two double crochet in the next stitch. Followed by a puff stitch. And again, you're just inserting your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. You should have eight loops, yarn over, pull through all eight loops. So you are going to repeat this stitch pattern, skipping two and then putting two doubles and a puff in the next stitch until you have a total of 15 puff stitches completed. So you're just going to repeat that until you have 15 groups, skipping two stitches in between each group, and I will meet you there. So here I wanted to show you, you should have 15 puff stitches if you followed my instructions, and you should be up here where we need to increase for the flap. So instead of two doubles, we are gonna do three doubles so that our work will not curl up on itself. So we're still gonna skip two stitches, but instead of making two doubles, we're gonna make three doubles. And we're gonna do this a total of six times. So skip two stitches and make three doubles in the next stitch, as well as a puff stitch. Now we're going to skip two stitches and repeat that. We're going to put three double crochet followed by a puff stitch all in that next stitch. You're just going to repeat that a total of six times. So here we are, you should have six groups of three double crochet. So make sure that you do before we move on. Now we're gonna go back, since we're done increasing, to just putting two double crochet with our puff stitch. So we're still skipping two stitches in between each group, but we're gonna go back to doing two doubles. So skip two stitches, Put two double crochet and a puff stitch in the next stitch. And you're just going to repeat that until you have 14 groups and you're going to skip two stitches in between and I'll meet you there. So here we are at the end. You are going to chain one after your last puff to compensate for the beginning chain two that does not count as a stitch. 
Now we'll skip a stitch and double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 77 double crochet and 35 puff stitches. For row four, we're going to chain two and turn. It does not count as a stitch. And this time we're just going to skip that first stitch. We're going to put our two doubles and our puff stitch in the next stitch, which should actually be that chain one that we made after our last puff. So all of our groupings, or I should say all of our puff stitches, should be sharing stitches with other puff stitches. So you're going to put two double crochet and a puff stitch in that second stitch of the row which should be that chain one stitch that we made before we ended the last row. Now we're going to skip two stitches and put two double crochet in a puff in the next stitch. Again, that should be the top of the puff stitch. You're just going to repeat this until you have 15 puff stitches or 15 groups. So repeat that until you have 15 puff stitches and I will meet you there. So you should have 15 puff stitches or 15 groups. Now we are going to increase across the flap. And just like before, we're going to do three double crochet, only this time we have to skip three stitches in order for it to share that stitch with the puff stitch. So we're going to put three double crochet and a puff stitch in that stitch. So skip three stitches, one, two, three, and then we're going to put our three doubles and our puff stitch in the next stitch. And you're just going to repeat that six times, just like we did on the last row. So that's skip three and put three double crochet plus our puff stitch in the next stitch. So you should stop and count and make sure you have six groups with three double crochet before moving on. Now we're going to go back to skipping two stitches and putting two doubles in our groups. So we're going to skip the next two stitches and put our two double crochet and puff stitch in the next stitch. And just like on the other side, we are going to do that to the end. So you should have 14 groups of two doubles and puffs when you get to the end. So here we are at the last puff stitch, just like before, we are going to chain one to compensate for the beginning chain two. Since the beginning chain two does not count as a stitch, we need to compensate for that. So we're going to chain one, skip two stitches, and then double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 77 double crochet and 35 puff stitches. Now we're going to chain one and turn. Of course, the chain one does not count as a stitch. We are going to half double crochet in the first 43 stitches. So you're just going to repeat that until you have 43 stitches completed, and I will meet you there. So here we are at the flap, we're going to have to increase. So in the next stitch, you're going to put two half double crochet. And then follow that by putting one half double in the next three stitches. And you're going to do this seven times. So you need to increase seven times around the flap. So that was one, 
Now we're going to increase again. So we're going to put two half doubles in the next stitch, followed by three half doubles. And you're just going to repeat that until you have seven increases. And then you're just going to go back to putting one in each stitch until you have 120 half doubles. Now for row six, we're going to chain one and turn. And we are going to be working in the third loops throughout, which is this loop right here. So I'm going to show you a close up. This here is the back loop. This is the front loop. And then this is the third loop. So you're going to half double crochet in the third loop of the first 46 stitches. So half double crochet in the third loop of the first 46 stitches. And when you get that done, I will meet you there. So now we need to increase again. So we are going to put two half double crochet in the third loop of the next stitch. And then we're going to half double crochet in the next four stitches. So we're going to increase again. So put two half doubles in the next stitch, followed by one half double in the next four stitches. You are going to repeat this process until you have a total of six increases. So count and make sure that you have six increases, and then we're just going to half double crochet to the end. This is what your piece should look like, and you should have 126 half doubles. Chain two. Again, they will not count as a stitch. We're going to turn. We're going to skip the first two stitches. And in the third stitch of the row, we're going to make two double crochets and a puff stitch in the same stitch. We're going to skip two stitches and place our two double crochet puff stitch in the next stitch. So again, we're going back to our stitch pattern and you are going to repeat this until you have a total of 15 puff stitches. Once you have 15 groups of doubles and puffs, we are going to increase again across the flap. Just like before, we're going to skip two stitches, only this time we're going to put three double crochet and a puff stitch in the next stitch. So that's three doubles and then our puff stitch. Then we're going to skip two more stitches and in the third stitch we're going to put our three doubles and our puff. You are going to repeat this process until you have 11 increases. So just do that until you have 11 groups of three and I'll meet you there. So count and make sure that you have 11 groups of three doubles. And then we're going to go back to our two double crochet puff groups. So you're going to skip two stitches and put two double crochet and a puff in the next stitch. And you're going to do this until you have a total of 15 puffs.
So here we are at the end. We're going to chain one to compensate and we are going to skip two stitches and put our last double crochet in the last stitch of the row. You should have 94 doubles and 41 puff stitches at the end of this row. Now for row eight, we're going to chain two and turn. Again, the chain two does not count as a stitch. We're going to skip that first stitch and put our two double crochet and our puff stitch in the next stitch, which by the way should be that chain one below. Skip two stitches, and we're going to do our two double crochet and our puff in the next stitch. And this time, you are going to repeat this process until you have a total of 16 puff stitches. So do that until you have 16 groups, and I will meet you there. So you should have 16 groups of puffs. Now we're going to increase again across the flap. We're going to skip three stitches and put our three double crochet and our puff in the next stitch. And we are going to repeat that 11 times. So we're skipping three stitches and then we are doing three doubles with our puff stitch this time. Skip three stitches, put three doubles in our puff in the next stitch. And then you're just going to repeat that till you have 11 groups of three. So count and make sure that you have 11 groups of three double crochet before moving on. And now we are going to go back to just skipping two stitches and just putting two doubles. And then you are going to do that until you have 14 groups. So we're going to skip two stitches and put our two double crochet and our puff stitch in the next stitch. And you are just going to repeat this process until you have 14 groups of two. Which should be the last puff stitch of the row. So here we are. We are going to chain one after our last puff to compensate. We're going to skip two stitches and put our double crochet in the last stitch. And you should have 94 doubles and 41 puffs. Chain two and turn. Again, the chain two does not count as a stitch. We're going to skip that first stitch and we're going to put two doubles and a puff in the next stitch. Again, that should be that chain one stitch below. We're going to skip two stitches and put two doubles and a puff in the next stitch. And you are just going to repeat this until you have 15 puffs or 15 groups of puffs. And I will meet you there. So you should have 15 puff stitches at this point. Now, of course, we're going to increase. You're going to skip three stitches and put three double crochet and a puff stitch in the next stitch. And you are going to do this a total of 11 times. So there's our three doubles and our puff stitch. Now we're going to skip three stitches, put three doubles and a puff. So just repeat that across until you have 11, and I will meet you there. 
So double check and make sure that you have 11 groups of three doubles. And then you're just going to go back to skipping two stitches and putting two doubles. So skip two stitches and put two double crochet and a puff stitch in the next stitch. And you're just going to repeat that until you have 15 groups. We're going to chain one after our last puff stitch, skip two stitches, and put a double crochet in the last stitch. You should have 94 doubles and 41 puffs at the end of this row. Now we are going to do a round of single crochet around the entire piece to sort of kind of clean it up. So we're going to chain one and turn to work across the sides of the rows. You're going to put two single crochet around every double crochet and around every chain two or chain three. So essentially the only place where you're going to put one single crochet is around those half double crochet posts. So you're going to put two single crochet around every double crochet post and around every chain two post. And then when you get to your half double crochet rows, you're just going to put one single crochet around those. Here we are at a half double crochet row. We're just going to put one there. So we're going to put one single crochet around that row, one single crochet around that row, and then we're going to go back to putting two singles around each post. So here we are at the half double crochet rows. You're just going to put one single crochet around each of those posts there. And then go back to putting two singles. At the end of this, you should have 32 single crochet across. So I would stop and count because you don't want it to have too many. Now we're going to chain two and turn to work around the entire piece. So we're going to work our way around this way and you're going to single crochet in the first 49 stitches. So you're just going to single crochet up the side until you have 49 single crochet up the side and I'll meet you there. So you should have 49. Now we're going to increase across the flap. So you're going to put two single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to put one single crochet in the next three stitches. And you're going to do this a total of 10 times. So you should have a total of 10 increases across the flap here. So we're going to put two singles in the next stitch followed by one single in the next three stitches. And you're just going to do that until you have 10 increases. So now we are just going to put one single crochet in each stitch to the end, chain one and slip stitch in our first single to join. You should have 178 single crochet. Now you're going to want to leave yourself a long tail when you fasten off because we're going to use it to sew up the side seam. So turn it so the wrong side is facing you and if you are worried about that the right side is the side with the ribbing. And you're just going to fold up the base until you reach that group of nine double crochet from row one. 
You're going to want to make sure that your canvas bag fits inside. And mine does, so I'm, I'm happy with it. And we're going to use a yarn needle and sew across the side seam. You should be at the level of the last two double crochet because the three double crochet groups are the flap. So make sure that you are not any higher up than that last grouping of two double crochet. And then I'm just gonna sew across each stitch to close up this side seam. And then you're gonna repeat the same process to the other side making sure you're lined up with the last grouping of two double crochet because those three double crochet is the flap. So make sure you're at the last group of two. So right there. And then you're just gonna sew that side seam up as well using the same method. And then you're gonna place your bag inside once you've woven in your tails and make sure the flap comfortably closes and it does so that's good and i'm going to add a twist clasp which i've never done before and i wanted to show you on camera because it was a struggle so i want to make sure you don't have the same struggle so i got this twist lock from hobby lobby and there's the instructions there so you essentially take it apart here the back comes off of this by squeezing it. These two parts you have to unscrew and that should go on the front flap. So you wanna find the center hole and put that there. So find the center hole, make sure it's big enough to open up to the size of the twist lock. And then you're going to want to line up the screws with a smaller hole nearby. Now, I did not put the whole process on camera because it took me a long time to get the yarn out of the hole. So make sure that the, the yarn is not in the center hole or the twist lock won't be able to go through. And I am going to add felt. I highly recommend doing this adding a piece of felt to the back of those prongs so that it has something to stabilize it. So I'm showing you here that once I figured out where I wanted it, I cut two slits where those prongs are and I decided to use it to stabilize the piece. So I am putting the felt in between the project and the, the prongs. Then you're gonna to wanna to line up your bag, make sure you have everything exactly how you want it because we're about to hot glue this sucker in place. So I start with the middle part here because you wanna be able to reach it and I'm actually hot gluing the felt portion to the bag. So get it lined up before you press down. And then this is how I hot glue all of my crochet bags to these canvas bags. You don't wanna to use too much glue or it's gonna show through and it's not something you want to bleed through. So I am using very little hot glue. Once you have it how you like it, this is how it should look. And you could add a little tassel to the zipper. I prefer not to add them to the zipper anymore because it sticks out a little bit. But otherwise, you're done. I also wanted to mention that I made another one using a bead as a button closure. This bag is actually made out of raffia paper, which I absolutely loved. And this is just like a 10 or 12 millimeter bead and I just used the hole there and I added the tassel to the flap. I did have to use a smaller hook to meet gauge, just a heads up, and I used Wool in the Gang Raw Raw Raffia. 
This is a paper yarn. So just keep that in mind, but it is a lot of fun to make. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.